Hi, today we will talk about the concept of torque. Torques are extremely important in the field of engineering, in particular structural engineering and therefore wind engineering too. I briefly introduced this concept in my video on the reasons for wind engineering and I promise that I will expand on this concept and now I keep that promise. A link to that video is in the description if you want to check it out. Torques are not the same as forces. And in today's video, we will learn how to distinguish between these two. And you will also learn how to calculate torque in some simple situation. In my previous video, I talked about Navier's Stokes equations. But I also said that from now on, I will switch between fluid dynamics, engineering and so on. The reason is that my teaching is motivated by great Richard Feynman. And he said that the best way to attract students is to be random. And in that randomness, you hook this person to this subject, this person to another subject, third person to third subject, and so on. Since the main subject of this YouTube channel is uh, on atmospheric sciences, wind engineering and wind energy, but there are other topics covered too, but these three are the key, I will switch between these three and hopefully you will hook for one of these subjects. Without any further ado, let's go and describe the basic fundamentals of the physics of torques. We will demonstrate the concept of torque using an example of a building. Here we have Earth's surface and a building rising above the Earth's surface. The height of the building is R and there is a force exerted on the top of the building, let's say, for example, a wind gust, and that force is F. This building is anchored at the surface, somewhere here, and this point, let's call it P, is called the pivot point, or the point or, of rotation around which we want to calculate the torque. In this situation, torque that we use uh, Greek letter tau, is the cross product between R and F, where R is the arm of this force, F is the force, and tau is torque. Units for torque are newton meters in SI system. If we are interested in the magnitude of this torque, because this is a cross product, then magnitude is R, F, sine theta, where theta is the angle between R and F, measured from R to F, and R and F without arrows are the magnitude of these two vectors. By convention, counterclockwise, torque is positive, and the clockwise torque is negative. In this case, you see that this force would exert a positive torque in respect to this pivot point. Therefore, we can conclude that a force applied on an object at a point away from the pivot point will cause torque. The greater the force, the greater the torque. The greater the force arm, or the distance between the point where the force is, is applied and the pivot point, the greater the torque. Also, the closer the angle between force arm and force to 90 degrees, the greater the torque, because sine of 90 degrees is 1. If we have multiple torques, the net torque will cause angular acceleration. So we can conclude that there is a similarity between, or a rather analogy between forces and torques. The second Newton's law for forces, of course, says that the sum of all forces is mass times acceleration. We can put it in vector form. Similarly, sum of all torques around some pivot point is product of 
moment of inertia and angular acceleration. So we can see that in the case of rotation, mass is replaced with the moment of inertia, and we will talk in details about moment of inertia in some future videos. Acceleration is replaced with angular acceleration, and force is replaced by torque. Now, let's see how we get components of the torque from this equation over here. Well, we already know that, for example, from my video on the centrifugal force, because this is a cross product, so we find components using determinants. Here we write three unit vectors, i, j, k, here, x, y, and z components of the force arm, and here are the x, y, and z components of the force. Which means, if we solve this determinant, torque in the i direction is r, y, f, z minus r, z, f, y, minus in the j direction, r, x, f, z, minus r, z, f, x, and in the k direction, we cross these, it's r, x, f, y, minus r, y, f, x. So you can see if you have uh, strange-looking object and forces that are acting in all possible directions, calculating torque can be quite complicated, and it is very complicated in practical situations. In wind engineering, we are interested in statics. And statics means that the sum of all forces does not result in some acceleration, and the sum of all torques does not result in angular acceleration, but rather they sum up to zero, which means sum of all forces is equal to the sum of all torques, and they are equal to zero. This is statics. Now you might ask, can you give us at least one example where the sum of all forces is zero, but there is non-zero net torque? And I can tell you, yes, I can. Very good example is revolving doors. Let's say this is a revolving door. And there is one person trying to enter into the building from this side. And that person exerts force, let's call it F1. This is pivot point P, middle of the door. Let's assume that at the same time there is another person leaving the building and that person exerts the same force by assumption but in the opposite direction. Now, if you sum these two forces, you will get zero. You have force in this direction and the opposite force, and the same force in the opposite direction, they will result in, in a zero net force. But these two forces will result in overall net torque in the counterclockwise direction, which means we will have positive torque. The door will rotate. You can also see from this example, if there is a stupid person that tries to get into the building by applying force on this part of the door like that, that person will never open the door because the force is passing through the pivot point. The force has to pass away from the pivot point in order to exert torque. So the moment this stupid person creates an angle compared to the, this door, 
it will start applying the let's say it decides to apply force like this then you can see that this new line of the force is not passing through the pivot point and the door will start opening now i will also give you a useful tip to calculate torques of course you can always calculate torques using this form here determinants but in many cases it can be much easier. Let's look at the example of this building that we had above. And let's assume that the force on the building is acting in this direction. You are given this length between the pivot point and the point where force is impinging on the building and let's call it r and you are given this force f how do you calculate torque well we said torque in vector form is r cross f but we also said it is r f sine theta which means that the magnitude can be expressed as r perpendicular times f where r perpendicular is the perpendicular distance from the line of the site of the force to the pivot point what does that mean that means you create you make a line of sight of this force and that is just you extend this action of the force everywhere and you go from the pivot point and you drop perpendicularly to this line of sight. In this particular case, this is R perpendicular and we use this symbol. At the end, let's calculate one simple problem related to torques. Here we have our building that uh, has pivot point P at the surface height of the building is 10 meter and there is a force let's say due to wind that is acting on the top of the building under this angle and the angle between the force and the horizontal is 30 degrees we need to calculate torque around this point p we just said that torque can be calculated intensity of the torque as the normal distance to the force times force here you already notice that this force will try to rotate the building in the counterclockwise direction which means we have positive torque let's find this r normal we said we extend the line of force or the line of sight of this force line of action and then we drop perpendicular from the pivot point to that line of sight. So this is my R perpendicular and I need to find it. We are given this angle that is 30 degrees, but we notice that the angle between the building and the horizontal is 90 degrees. So this angle over here, let's call it whatever, theta this angle theta has to be 90 degrees minus alpha which is 30 so theta is 90 minus 30 that would be 60 degrees therefore sine of this angle which is 60 degrees is the opposite which is r normal over the length of the building which is 10 meters which means r normal if you calculate this is 8.7 meters therefore torque is 8.7 times force which is 1000 newtons or torque is 
8700 newton meters. And this is how you calculate torque in this simple example provided here. At the very end, let's perform some demonstrations of torques and the best tool to demonstrate how torques affect an object is of course, you know by now. Hammer. There is no better tool to demonstrate how torques uh, are related to forces than hammer. Let's look at it. I need my experimental platform. By now you are familiar with this platform and you are familiar with hammer. I put this hammer on the platform and look, first of all, in this position, everything is in equilibrium and we call that statics. Sum of all forces and sum of all torques sum, sums up to zero. Let's look what are the forces here. Well, there is the force of gravity acting on the hammer and there is the force from the horizontal platform acting on a hammer. These two forces are in the equilibrium, nothing is moving. Let's now incline this hammer. What are the torques that are acting on a hammer? I will look at the torques compared to this pivot point here where the hammer is touching this experimental platform. There is a force from the tip of my finger that is inclining this hammer in the counterclockwise direction from my point of view, which is positive torque compared to the pivot point. Then there is gravity act from the handle acting from the center of the mass of the handle downwards, which is also trying to tilt hammer in the counterclockwise direction, producing positive torque. Then there is this side of the hammer here and uh, there is gravity from the center of mass of this metal part acting down, trying to rotate this hammer in the counterclockwise direction, again creating positive torque. The only negative torque is from this side of the hammer and gravity from the center of mass of this part of the hammer is acting horizontal, uh, vertically down, creating negative torque. In this case, all these torques and all forces are in equilibrium, are in equilibrium because look, hammer is not moving. Here, everything is in equilibrium, hammer is not moving. However, when I release this hammer until it establishes an equilibrium, sum of all torques and forces is not zero because we have some acceleration in particular angular acceleration, which means that net torque is not zero until equilibrium is established. Notice also that this uh, negative torque is stronger than the two positive torques due to the handle and due to this metal part of the hammer because, oh, now it's in equilibrium. Because when I release it, it gets, it doesn't tilt to this side, but it's rather returned to this equilibrium, which means that torque due to this side of the hammer overpowers other two torques. Notice also if I tilt this hammer and now I displace it and I release it, it will just fall. It will fall because the only torque in this case is due to the handle and the gravity acting in the center of the mass of this handle and there is nothing to counterbalance. There is no torque counterbalancing this whole system in the other direction. So when I release it, it just falls down. In this case, hopefully now you understand, this torque overpowers other two. When I release it, it goes into the equilibrium. Until it reaches equilibrium, sum of all torques is not zero. Hammer is just an amazing, amazing tool. You use hammer in construct. There is no engineering without hammer. You can use hammer for self-defense. You can use hammer for attacking purposes. You can use hammer for demonstration of torques and uh, forces. And on this channel, we will use hammer quite often. I hope you learn today a lot about hammers, uh, about torques, 
or the moment of the force. Until next video, when we will continue our journey of exploring torques and we will calculate in particular torque due to snow load on a balcony using real measurements. Goodbye.